Hey guys, good morning. Welcome back. Today we're going to be reading a few more chapters from Spy Penguins, the spy who loved ice cream. We've only got about today and tomorrow before we find out what happened to Uncle Bryn and we finish the book. So I hope that you'll join me both today and tomorrow so we can hear what happens at the end of our adventure. Without further ado, let's get started. Chapter 16. They pulled up behind a dumpster in a parking lot close to the paint-your-own-pottery place and right next to Waddle's department store. Jackson peeked out. Okay, we'll need to make a run for it. As long as Mom's not looking out one of the windows, we should be okay, and... Um, Jackson, Quigley interrupted. Check out that truck sled over there. Jackson looked where Quigley was pointing, and then he saw it. He gripped the handlebars of his ice cycle, his beak twitching, his flippers tingling. It's here, he gasped. The ice truck, the ice cream truck sled. Jackson and Quigley watched the back doors of the ice cream truck sled clank open and three penguins wearing caps jump out. Jackson's feathers stood on end. It's Uncle Bryn, he spluttered, or would have, if his throat hadn't felt like it had six starfish stuck in it. It looks like they're eating something. Quigley said, squinting to see better. Ice cream, Jackson hissed. Brain freezing ice cream. That must mean they're about to do another robbery. We've got to stop them. Maybe we should call the FBI, Quigley suggested. No way, Jackson puffed out his cheeks. They'll just arrest them. If only we could get the caps off their heads. Oh no, they're on the move. They watched the three penguins throw their empty ice cream tubs into a trash can and shuffle across the parking lot. Jackson gasped. I don't believe it. They're heading for, he gulped for air, Waddles. Uncle Bryn's about to rob Mom's work. This was a gold-plated Force 10 Max Power Ultimate Disaster. Jackson's mom was an award-winning store detective. If Uncle Bryn tried to steal anything from under her beak, Jackson knew she'd be on to him in a flash. His mom would hate having to arrest Uncle Bryn, but if she didn't, she would probably lose her job. Jackson sighed. It was already too late to try to stop them. Uncle Bryn and his two colleagues had disappeared through the back door of Waddles. What are we going to do? Jackson ran his flipper through his crest. Think, double zero, he told himself. There has to be some way to fix this. Hey, that's interesting, Quigley said. He was peering through his binoculars at the truck sled, and the antennas just popped up on the sled's roof. So, Jackson tried to look interested, but he knew it wasn't working. It's a transmitter aerial, Quigley explained. Which means the ice cream truck could be the control hub for the caps. Say that again, Jackson said. In normal penguin language, someone in the ice cream truck is probably controlling your uncle, Quigley said. It makes sense. It's much easier to transmit messages if you're close by. There's less a chance of interference. And that transmitter aerial suggests that the person controlling your uncle Bryn is probably inside the truck. Blowfrost or one of his workers. Jackson felt his heart begin to beat faster. Maybe we aren't too late to stop Uncle Bryn. Quigley, you're a genius! He slapped his buddy on the back. All we need to do is get inside the truck and we can control Uncle Bryn. We can stop him before he robs Mom's store. He glanced up at the brown building. It's got to have at least six floors. It might take him a while to find the target, whatever that is. Fancy purses? Quigley suggested. Mom always likes looking at them, but she says they're way too pricey to buy. Maybe, but whatever they're after, we have to stop them. Come on, quick, let's do this. Just one thing, how are we going to get whoever is in there out of it? Quigley asked as he followed Jackson across the parking lot. Like this, Jackson banged his flipper on the side of the truck sled. Hello, hello, open up, we um... Want to buy some ice cream? Quigley glanced through the windshield, but no one was in the front seats. They must be in the back of the truck, he whispered. Uh, 
He flipped a switch on the side, then peered through the dark glass covering the side windows. There's definitely two penguins in there, he whispered. The infrared mode on my binoculars is picking up their body heat. Jackson felt a slight wobble in his tummy. Taking on two baddies controlling a robbery was a big deal. But I've got to do this for Uncle Britton, he reminded himself. He stared at the truck sled again. There has to be some way to get them out. Well, I do have one idea, Quigley rum rummaged through his backpack. It's my latest and greatest secret agent field weapon. Ta-da! Blowing bubbles? Jackson groaned. Neat, but I don't think blowing bubbles at the windows is going to make them leave. These are no ordinary bubbles. Quigley popped out the lid and took out the wand. Watch. As he blew, a stream of green bubbles drifted over to Jackson. I love bubbles as much as the next penguin, Jackson began, wafting them away with his flipper. But we don't have time for... Ah! Jackson suddenly covered his beak and made a yuck face. Smells worse than Hoff Rock Face's farts. What is that? Barf bubbles, Quigley said, guaranteed to clear a room in 10 seconds. All we need to do is get them to open a window so I can blow some in. Then they'll be out of that ice cream truck sled before we can say one scoop or two. Nice one, Agent Q. But if they won't be able to stand the smell in there, how will we? Because we will be wearing these. Quigley passed Jackson a clothespin. Just stick one over your beak. You won't smell a thing. But we still need to get them to open up. Maybe we could pick the door lock or something. Have you got a crest pin? Quigley shook his head. I don't, but Lily might. Look! Across the parking lot, Lily and the young penguins were leaving the pottery place. She waved when she saw them heading over. Hey, Jackson. Hey, Quigley, Lily said. Did you come to do some pottery? We just finished, but you can come to the aquarium with us if you like. Please, she mouthed glancing at the giggling hatchlings who were now covered in paint as well as sticky ice cream. My dad's giving us a tour. It'll be really neat and I'm sorry, Lily, we can't. Jackson glanced at his wrist flipper. They were running out of time. Have you got a crest pin? She frowned. No. Why? We have to break into that truck sled. Jackson pointed across the lot. There are two penguins inside who are controlling my uncle. He's in Waddle's department store about to rob it and they're giving him instructions. Lily's eyes widened. Really? Quigley nodded. But if we can open a door or a window of the truck sled, I've got these awesome bubbles to blow inside that really stink. They stink so bad the penguins will jump out, Jackson said. Then we can get in and tell my uncle to quit robbing. But we haven't got much time. Lily eyed the truck sled for a moment. Then she glanced back at the boys. I haven't got a crest pin, but I've got another idea, she said. She beckoned the hatchlings closer. Listen up, guys. My friends need your help. We do? Jackson looked at Quigley. Pay attention, everyone, Lily told the hatchlings. This is really important, and we need to work quickly. Chapter 17. So does everyone know what we're doing? Lily asked the hatchlings. They were gathered beside the truck sled now. We're going to sing really loudly. She turned to Jackson and Quigley and whispered, like the worst, most annoying street performers you've ever heard. Then the baddie penguins inside will get so fed up with us, they'll open their windows and tell us to go away. Jackson crossed his flippers. Please let this work. Lily turned back to the little penguins. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. She'll be coming round the iceberg when she comes. She'll be coming round the iceberg when she comes. Singing, I, I, Flippy. As Lily launched into the song, the hatchlings, still giggling and nudging one another, began joining in. Quigley moved closer to the truck, sled windows, his bubble wand at the ready. She'll be wearing shrimp pajamas when she comes. She'll be wearing shrimp pajamas when she comes, sang Lily and the hatchlings. Come on, come on. Jackson stared at the windows of the truck sled, willing them to open. She'll be swimming with a seahorse when she comes, sang Lily and the hatchlings. Then suddenly, the truck sled window shot open and a flipper full of coins were thrown out. Now go away, a voice shouted from inside, and don't come back. It was just the chance Quigley needed. He jumped forward and blew in the bubbles just as the window closed.
<clears throat> then, ah, ah, the truck sled doors crashed open and two chunky penguins in Froster's caps fell out, coughing and moaning. Jackson, his clothespin on his beak, barged past them and dived inside, closely followed by Quigley. Lock the doors, he shouted. The Froster's penguins began hammering on the doors. Get out of our truck, one yelled, but Jackson didn't notice. He was gazing at a wall of screens inside the truck sled. On all the monitors were the same picture, a close-up of a giant metal safe, its door open, and piles of cash being emptied into a sack. It's Uncle Bryn, Jackson gasped, the horrible wobbly feeling returning to his tummy. I'd recognize those flippers anywhere. We're too late. He's robbing Waddle's safe. There's still time, Quigley said. Look, that's the microphone. He twisted it toward Jackson. Speak into it. Jackson took a deep breath. This is, um, control hub to Bryn Rock Flopper. Stop robbing that safe immediately. Instantly, the flippers on the screen froze. It's working, Quigley whispered. Put all the money back in the safe, Jackson said, holding his breath and staring at the screen. He's doing it, Quigley said. Look, his buddies are helping too. More loud thumps on the truck sled doors made him and Jackson jump. The penguins outside were yelling and cursing now. They began to rock the truck sled. Jackson braced himself against the control desk, then leaned into the microphone again. When you have put the money back inside the safe, he told his uncle, close the safe door and return to the truck sled. Hurry, he added as the truck sled bounced wildly again. Jackson, Quigley shouted, your backpack's bleeping. What? No, not the FBI radio. Jackson grabbed the bag. He had a bad feeling about this. Calling all agents. Calling all agents. A robbery is underway at Waddle's department store. Rogue agent Bryn Rockflopper has been spotted on security cameras. All agents respond. Disaster, Jackson gasped. If the FBI comes now, they're going to think we are a part of the robbery. No way will they believe that we're trying to stop it. That means Blowfrost will get away with everything, Quigley said. What are we going to do? Jackson ran his flipper through his crest. He stood up from the control panel and gritted his beak. The only thing we can do? Escape. Do you guys think that they're going to escape? What do you think is going to happen? Let's find out and keep reading chapter 18. You can drive, right? Quigley said as he and Jackson peered over at the front seats of the truck sled. Not exactly, Jackson scratched his crest. But hey, how hard can it be? Grown-ups do it all the time, and I haven't played one adult at flipper car racing on the icebox who can beat me. I never crash. Whoa, he yelled as the truck sled rocked sideways again. Sheesh, those penguins must be super mad. Here comes your uncle, Quigley said, pointing out the window. He leaned over to unlock the doors, but before Uncle Bryn reached them, the two batty penguins barged in. Hey, no, get off me, Quigley yelled as the one with a curly crest grabbed his flippers. The second penguin, smaller but stockier and smelling of krill chili, dived for Jackson. Gotcha, he growled. Jackson managed to slip out of his flippers and grab the microphone again. Agent Rockflopper, he shouted into it, come to the truck sled immediately. You and your colleagues need to flipper cuff the two rotten Frosters penguins attacking me and my friend. And whatever they say, do not listen to any more instructions from any penguin wearing a Frosters cap. Ah, get off! I'll teach you to try and steal our truck sled, the stinky penguin muttered. Jackson felt a bubble of anger balloon in his belly. Got to use some moves from the secret agent's guide to unarmed flipper-to-flipper -flipper combat, Jackson told himself. Time to unleash the peck flick and run move. The peck part worked. Jackson pulled off his clothespin and beak biffed the baddie in the belly. The flick bit was pretty awesome too. Jackson flipper flicked him in the eye, but the run part was an epic fail on account of the bad breath penguin being so angry by then that he clamped his flippers around Jackson and squeezed. Jackson yelped as the breath shot out of his lungs. I'm not a tube of beak paste, he wanted to shout, but there was no air left in his chest to speak. But then, unhand that hatchling, 
Bryn and his two colleagues dived into the back of the truck sled and began wrestling with the two Frosters' baddies. Jackson felt a wave of relief wash over him. This was the Uncle Bryn he knew, fighting bad guys, making everything better. Wow, this is some party, Lily said, peeking in through the door. I think we're going to go now. Hey, what's that noise? She glanced behind her. Um, Jackson, there are some serious looking sleds heading your way. Jackson dodged around the wrestling grown-ups and poked his head through the truck sled door. Six shiny black sleds were speeding into the parking lot. The FBI, we've got to go. Thanks so much for your help, Lily. I promise we will make it up to you. Jackson ducked back inside and slipped into the front seat of the truck sled. He turned the ignition key and the engine chugged to life. Yeah, thanks, Lily. You guys were awesome, Quigley said, pulling the door of the truck sled closed. He slid past the grown-ups who were still shouting and wrestling and bouncing around in the back of the truck. Just give me a second, Jackson said, as Quigley slid into the seat next to him. He was gazing at the driver's panel, a wave of panic sweeping through his feathers. If only he had an icebox controller. Hey, isn't that your mom out there? Quigley said. Jackson glanced through the windshield and felt his feathers freeze. There, head down, feet flapping, flipper cuffs swinging from her belt, was Jackson's mom coming straight for them. Jackson gulped. Please don't spot me, please don't spot me. He shimmied down into the footwell of the driver's seat, scrunching himself as low as he could go to avoid her. She looks mad, Quigley said. But don't worry, I've got a plan to get us out of here. I just, I googled how to operate dangerous criminal ice cream truck sleds and found a video on my ice pad. See? He turned the side. He turned the screen around to show Jackson, then flipped it back. Just hit the right hand pedal and put the gear shift into drive. Yep, exactly like that. Whoa. The truck sled lurched forward, nearly knocking Jackson's mom over. Jackson spun the wheel hard to the left, and they just had time to see her face go great white as she looked at, as she locked eyes with Jackson before they whizzed past her out of the parking lot. Maybe she didn't see you, Quigley said. She saw me, Jackson gasped, spinning the wheel to the right and screeching around the corner. Didn't you see her face? Sheesh. He shuddered. She's going to go off the shark scale when she catches up with me. What's happening back there, he added. It's awfully quiet. Quigley just twisted around and leaned into the back to check. Good news, he said, sliding back into place a moment later. Your uncle's got them cuffed and strapped in, and he even put clothespins on their beaks to keep them quiet. Awesome, Jackson muttered. Yeah, but I think we're being followed. Quigley added, pointing to the side mirror. Looks like the FBI is on our tail. And hey, is that your mom? Jackson glanced in his mirror and felt his belly turn to liquid. Festering fin feathers, he spluttered. She's riding my bike. He hit the accelerator pedal and the truck sled shot forward. Er, where exactly are we going? Quigley asked, holding onto the door handle because the truck sled was whizzing along like a Formula One racer. Jackson shrugged. He hadn't quite worked out that bit of the escape plan yet. Driving in a straight line seemed to be enough of a battle right now. Sorry, he shouted as several old age penguins into a pedestrian penguin crosswalk had to jump back onto the sidewalk to avoid being mowed down. I don't want to worry you, Quigley said, but I think two more FBI sleds have joined the posse. Quigley peered into his mirror again. And I have no idea how your mom is keeping up. Bionic legs, Jackson muttered. He always suspected his mom was part cyborg. As they whizzed around the next corner, a loud buzzing came from the dashboard and a crackly voice sounded. This is Froster's control, ro control room to truck sled X. Can you hear me? We seem to have lost contact. Please confirm your position. Jackson's eyes narrowed. Froster's, he breathed. Of course, Froster's factory. That's where we're going. We are? Quickly raised his eyebrows. Yep, Jackson gripped the steering wheel more tightly, and we're taking the FBI with us. We're going to lead them straight to Blowfrost. Once we're inside the factory, we'll be able to show them the secret laboratory and the weird brain-freezing ice cream and prove Uncle Bryn is innocent. Jackson pointed to a walkie-talkie on the dash. Can you hold that thing up for me? He said. Yeah, a bit closer. He took a deep breath. This is truck sled X, Jackson shouted into the walkie-talkie. 
We're on our way back to base and we have an urgent delivery for Mr. Blowfrost. Please have him standing by for our arrival. Wow, Quigley flipped off the walkie-talkie. Neat plan. Then, uh-oh, he added, glancing out of Jackson's window. We've got company. Jackson followed his stare and looked straight into the face of an FBI penguin. The FBI sled he was riding in had pulled up level with them. Pull over, the FBI sh penguin shouted through a megaphone, or we will force you off the road. Jackson put his foot down on the accelerator and the ice cream truck sled zoomed forward, nearly smacking into the back of a dumpster truck ahead of them. Ah! Jackson veered onto the other side of the road to overtake it, narrowly missing a bus coming the other way. Whoa, Quigley breathed. Awesome driving. Thanks. We're nearly at the docks now. Wait, what's that sign saying? Jackson hit the brakes and slowed down. The stoplight was showing up ahead and traffic had begun to line up behind it. Road work, Quigley groaned. He glanced in his mirror. And here comes the FBI again. But if we stop now, they'll arrest us and Blowfrost will get away with it all. There's got to be another way. Jackson took his foot off the accelerator, looking desperately for a place to turn off of the highway. Hold on one minute, Quigley was peering at the dashboard. If we can't go around them, he muttered, maybe we can go over them. Don't you remember what my dad said about the gear system he'd installed in a fleet of ice cream truck sleds? The hopper gear? But we don't even know if it was for frosters, Jackson said. There, Quigley pointed to a small red button at the bottom of the dash. If I was putting a hopper gear into a truck sled, I'd put the control in exactly that place. It's got to be the right button. What if you're wrong? Jackson glanced in his mirror. The FBI sleds were right behind them now. And so was his mom. What's the worst that could happen? Quigley grinned. Jackson took a deep breath and wished for the best. I hope your dad doesn't put self-destruct buttons on his inventions. He gritted his beak. Okay, let's do this. Then he hit the button. We're going to stop right there for today. Join me tomorrow as we finish up our Spy Penguins book. I can't wait to read what happens to Uncle Bryn, Quigley, and Jackson, and I wonder how his mom is going to feel when she finds out that her son was part of helping uncover this big mystery. What do you think? I'll see you tomorrow.